The Repair House Restoration Sim just came out on the 19th of July. It is exactly what it sounds like. You take contracts to repair or restore things for clients and later on it opens up to a little bit more. So let's talk about it. The Repair House was actually created by the original creator of PC Building Simulator. So at the beginning of the game, you start off in what is essentially a dilapidated house. You can decorate the house if you want to. You have to repair certain areas in order to access different rooms. There are boarded up rooms at the bottom of the house and there are stairs that are damaged that you can repair later on. I don't really see any use for those extra rooms at the moment and I haven't got that far to unlock all of them, but it does generally just give you more room to put your tools and things in order to restore and do your job. Generally, you will take a contract on the phone for an item. You will repair that item by taking pieces off of it and then replacing them with new parts that you buy from a catalogue. Later on in the game, you'll have the ability to repaint parts, which means you can take parts off of things. You have the ability to then clean them or sandblast them and then paint them to make them look brand new. The only big problem I found immediately in this game was mainly the fact that if you have a contract for something and it tells you on the phone system that you have to have it done within a deadline of two days. When you actually order things from the catalog, it takes two days for them to arrive, unless you wanna pay $50 more and then you can get it within one day. However, if you do get an item that goes past the deadline, once you complete the item and you ship it back to the person, you actually don't receive any XP or money which is kind of not the way businesses work. So I'm not sure why the developers decided that was a good idea. I can understand no XP, but not getting money for an item that you've completed and restored as part of a job, you wouldn't just not get paid for it. That's not the way businesses work. One thing you will then find yourself doing quite often is going onto the phone, seeing that there's something that needs to be done within a deadline of one day and just rejecting those, those contracts because there's no point trying to do them. From the beginning of the game, you will gradually unlock new things that you can repair, and there are a lot of items in the game to repair, so it does get a bit more interesting. It starts off quite simple and gets a little bit more advanced later on in the game. As I said, you then have the ability to paint, wash things, sandblast things, or paint them, which is a good thing, and later on, as you begin to level up, you'll access other things like auction houses, barns, and even a flea market that allow you to buy items repair them yourself and then potentially sell them off for a bit of profit. Like most games in this style, you basically start off doing contracts for people and later on in the late game, you won't do contracts anymore. You'll just start getting your own things and making your own money. I have played other repair and restoration games before. Uh, one of the big problems I found with those sort of games was that when you have to like sandblast an item, for example, if you sandblast more than 75% of it, it just suddenly completes and it's done. This is something that this game doesn't seem to do. When you're painting an item, you'll see a bar start to increase at the top. Also, every time you click to paint the item, it costs more money as you go. What this means is that if you apply more paint than you need to, it's going to cost you more to paint the item than it should have. This is a good way to show the fact that you should really use the least amount of paint possible to paint an object, because that's the way it should be. You shouldn't be putting like six or seven layers of paint onto one object, and if you do, it will cost you more. Therefore, the repair and restoration will cost you more, and you'll make less profit. The bar continues to go up, up towards the very top. There's like a yellow and a green section, and once it gets to the green section, you have perfect painting on that object, and then that's, that's it, you can use it, and it's done. Certain objects require certain parts to be a certain condition or the paintwork to be a certain condition as well. So that kind of adds to it and gives a bit more in-depth feel to it and the way the game works. That's pretty much the game though. So overall, I think it's a really good game. I've enjoyed it so far. I don't know how long it would go late game or whether it would be interesting late game, but it's definitely worth giving a go. So thank you for watching my video. I'm Green Lichen. Like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.